On January 16, 2001, Lawrence Kabila, President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, was assassinated by his bodyguard and former child soldier. The attack was believed to have been masterminded by the Rwandan government with tacit support from the United States. But who is Lawrence Desiree Kabila and how did he rise to power but got himself killed by his own child soldier? In this edition of His Pool Media, we revisit the story of President Laurent Desiree Kabila of the DRC, who also shed light on why his child soldiers turned against him and plotted his assassination. Please come with me. Laurent Kabila, born Laurent Desiree Kabila, was a Congolese revolutionary politician who served as the third president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo from 1997 until his assassination in 2001. Kabila was born on November 27, 1939 to the Luba tribe in the southern province of Katanga in the then Belgian Congo. His father was a Luba while his mother was a Lunda. When Kabila became president in 1997, he restored the country's former name, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He studied political philosophy at a French university and attended the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania where he met and formed a friendship with Yuweri Museveni, who later became the president of Uganda. But no proof of his academic achievement has ever been found or provided. But wait, before we continue, kindly book the like button on this video and consider subscribing to our channel if you have not done so already. Thank you. In 1960, Kabila became a youth leader in a political party linked to the country's first post-independence Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba. But in 1961, Lumumba was deposed and later killed by Mobutu Sese Seko. Around 1964, Lawrence Kabila, assisted by guerrilla leader Che Guevara, helped Lumumba's supporters to lead a revolution against the government. But the revolt was eventually suppressed in 1965 by the Congolese army led by Mobutu Sese Seko, who seized power later that year. Mobutu renamed the country Zaye in 1971. Meanwhile, in 1967, Kabila founded the People's Revolutionary Party, which established a Mazi's territory in the Kivu region of Eastern Zaye and managed to sustain itself through gold mining and ivory trading. When the enterprise came to an end during the 1980s, he ran a business selling gold in Dar es Salaam. In the mid-1990s, Kabila returned to Zaye and became the leader of the newly formed Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Congo Zaye ADFL. As opposition to dictatorial leadership of Mobutu Sese Seko grew, he rallied forces consisting mostly of Tutsis from eastern Zaye and marched west towards the capital city of Kinshasa, forcing Mobutu Sese Seko to flee the country. His forces continued to gather momentum. On May 17, 1997, Kabila installed himself as head of state and reverted the country's name to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. But before we look at how Lawrence Kabila was assassinated, let us first examine why his child soldiers turned against him and plotted his assassination. During its war against former President Mobutu Sese Seko between 1996 and 1997, the Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Congo Zaye, under the leadership of Lawrence Kabila, recruited and used child soldiers known as Kadogos. It is estimated that more than 10,000 children fought with the ADFL. After 1997, many of these children continued to serve in the new government, the Congolese Armed Forces, the FARC. An informal survey conducted by a FARC commander in November 1998 found that one out of 14 FARC soldiers stationed in Kinshasa was under the age of 13. The Kadugos were also among Kabila's closest entourage, including his presidential guard. In June 2000, under international pressure, Kabila issued a decree to stop the government's recruitment and use of child soldiers. Meanwhile, Kadogo is a Swahili word used in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo to refer to child soldier or little one, recruited as part of Congolese rebel army during the revolt against Mobutu. 
Kabila had believed that the Kadogos who had served him loyally since his rebellion in 1997 against ex-president Mobutu Sese Seko were completely loyal. He is believed to have told a visiting foreign businessman, quote, they will never do anything against me. They have been with me since the beginning. They are my children. End of quote. However, in November 2000, President Kabila became suspicious of a coup plot and had arrested, tortured, and executed several soldiers loyal to Commandant Anselm Masasu Nindaga, who had days earlier made a speech at a reunion for 1,200 Kadogos in Kinshasa. According to some reports, at least 10 Kadogos were among those executed. It emerged later that Masasu had been meeting secretly with child soldiers in Kabila's presidential guard and giving them tattoos, which they were told would make them invincible. However, the conspiracy to murder Kabila began in early January 2001 when a group of Kadogos traveled to Brazzaville and planned Operation Mbongo Zero. The plot known as Operation Mbongo Zero outlined how Kadogos would infiltrate important buildings in the capital such as the Marble Palace, the Presidential Palace. The word Mbongo means bull and money in Swahili and Lingala languages respectively. After gaining access to the palace, the perpetrators would approach the president with a revolver and fire at him point blank. This group of perpetrators were Kadugos who had fought with Kabila against Mobuti Sese Seko's military dictatorship. They were trusted by the president and had access to him at all times, making the plot easier. Rashidi Kasereka, the eventual killer, was reported to have said, quote, I will kill him, end of quote. On the 16th of January 2001, the assassin entered the president's office as the increasingly paranoid and isolated Kabila was discussing with an economic advisor, Emily Mota. The president and his advisor were discussing the forthcoming summit with France, which he believed would help to protect his presidency of the Congo. The assassin bent over Kabila and when the president leaned forward, thinking the bodyguard wanted to speak to him, he pulled out a revolver and shot the president. He had been shot three times, including a bullet to the head, fired at point blank, and the rest in the abdomen. The attack happened at about 2 p.m. in the afternoon of January 16, 2001. The assassin tried to escape from the palace with other conspirators amid gunfire, but was shot in the leg by other bodyguards who rushed to the scene. Then, Eddie Kappen, a close military advisor to President Kabila appeared immediately and shot Rashidi dead. Fifteen minutes later, amid the ensuing confusion, Kabila was in a helicopter headed to a clinic in Gombe, Kinshasa. The government immediately imposed a curfew starting at 6 p.m. Kabila was rushed in a helicopter to Harare, Zimbabwe, but was confirmed dead on the 18th of January 2001 at about 10 a.m. In 2011, an investigative documentary film by Al Jazeera concluded that the assassination of President Kabila was masterminded by the Rwandan government led by Paul Kagame with tacit support from the United States. It has been established that the United States consulate in the Congo was at least aware of the plot to kill Kabila. A Lebanese diamond merchant whose business had been recently terminated by Kabila was also linked with the assassination. The documentary film Murder in Kinshasa, which was researched and compiled by journalists Arnold Zichman and Melin Rabot, specified that international dispute over mineral and natural resources also played a part in the attack. Murder in Kinshasa summarizes allegations that Kabila was in fact murdered by supporters of the rebel faction Rally for Congolese Democracy RCD, in a plot organized by Rwanda. Mwenze Kongolo, Kabila's Minister of Justice, has said that those convicted of the killing were scapegoats. However, in January 2021, Congolese President Felix Shekedi released Eddie Kappen and 23 others from prison, citing humanitarian reasons. Kabila was buried in the Mosuli de Laurent Desiree Kabila in Kinshasa, 
on the 28th of January 2001. Before the actual burial, his body had been flown to Moba, his hometown, then to Lumumbashi and then back to Kinshasa for the state funeral. After a series of unexplained delays, Joseph Kabila was inaugurated as president of the DRC following his father's death on the 26th of January 2001. He succeeded his father at the young age of 29. But to fully understand the politics of the DRC previously named Zaye, you need to fully watch this video here to know how Mobutu Sese Seko conquered the country in 1965. Remember to book the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.